Hi guys, this is Ashish Maglani and today I'll be discussing the solutions to the educational code versus sound 134. So let's begin with problem A. So in this problem, you are given an image file of size 2 cross 2 consisting of 4 pixels and each of the pixels can have one of the 26 different colors. And in one operation, you can choose no more than 2 pixels of the same color and paint them to any uh, other color that you want. And you want to find the minimum number of operations such that the final color of all the pixels is the same. So basically, uh, what you can do is like in one operation, you can select any color and for that particular color, you can select no more than two pixels of that color and change them to any other color. So let me say that this is uh, the grid that I have been given. So this is cell number one, this is number two, this is number three and this is number four. So suppose the color of all the pixels are different. So we have four distinct colors and given in the grid and in one operation you can choose at only one color pixel. So this will require you three operations to make the color of all the pixels same. So for example, you choose uh, the pixels one, two and three and you color them such that uh, their final color is equal to the color of pixel four. So it will require you three moves to uh, do that and let us say that the number of distinct pixels were 3. So in this case, let me say this is color 1, this is also color 1. This is color 2 and this is color 3. So in one operation, what you can do is like you can uh, select uh, this pixel 1 and you can change both of them to color 3 and in next operation, you can choose this pixel 2 and change it to color 3. Similarly, you can do, uh, you can select this pixel 2 and change it to color 1 and you can change uh, choose this pixel 3 and to change this to color 1 so and like every possible combination that you try it's gonna take you two operations to achieve your final result and let us say that only uh, if we had only uh, two distinct colors present in the sequence so that would require only one operation to change it uh, to the all the pixels of the same color so for example you have been given three pixels of the same color and one pixel that is of a different color so in one move you can just select that uh, pixel and change it to color one so this will require one operation so basically if you have been given uh, with x distinct colors in the initial sequence it will require you x minus one moves so this is the naive solution for this and you can i'll just go over the code for this so what's okay uh, so basically i take the input uh, like i take all the four pixels as the input and i output uh, m dot size minus 1 like m is the m dot size denotes the number of testing pixels that i have in the initial sequence so let's move on to problem d so in this problem, uh, a robot is uh, placed on top left corner of a grid. So you are given a grid consisting of n rows and n columns. And the robot is initially placed at cell number one comma one. And the robot can move to any adjacent cell. Uh, like it can go from x comma y to x comma y plus one and so on. And the robot cannot move outside the grid. And there is a deadly laser that is present on the cell sx comma sy so this location has been provided to you in the input and if the robot comes into any cell that is uh, having a distance of less than or equal to t uh, to this laser then the robot gets evaporated so basically you want to move the robot such that it doesn't come near uh, a distance less than or equal to t to this uh, cell containing the deadly laser so and you have to print the least number of steps that it can take to move the robot from cell number one comma one to n comma m without uh, getting evaporated or without moving outside the grid so let's see what the problem statement is so in this you have been given a grid and the grid contains of n rows and m columns so initially your robot is placed in this cell cell number one comma one and you want to move this robot to this cell n comma m uh, in comma m you want to move this robot there is a deadly laser that is present in any of the cell let me say that it is present in this cell and the laser can damage the robot 
and like when it is present at any cell whose Manhattan distance is uh, less than or equal to D. So this like if you draw out the figure it will look something like this. So let me say that the distance was 1 like let me say the value of D was 1. So in that case the figure would look somewhat like this and if the distance was 2 then the figure would look somewhat like this. So if the robot comes near to any of these cell, like if the robot comes near to any of these cell, it will get evaporated. Otherwise, it can always pass through all of the remaining cells. And you have to find the minimum number of moves that it takes to move the robot to cell number n comma m. So let's see how we can move the robot. So basically, let me say that the laser is present somewhat over here. Okay. Uh, try out some grid so and let's say that the distance d that's mentioned in the problem like the maximum uh, like the uh, distance that the laser up affects is one uh, unit so in this case your figure would look something like this and you can move your robot through this pathway like uh, first it will go down then it will go right and next the other pathway is it can go uh, right first and it can go down later so in both of the cases the number of moves would be n plus m minus 2 so in both of the cases the number of moves would be n plus m minus 2 and this is like the only solution the num if the robot can reach the final cell the number of moves would always be n plus m minus 2 otherwise the answer is minus 1 because the robot cannot reach the cell and i will prove it uh, like why is it so so basically what you can see is uh, in either like the maximum uh, the like the maximum length that this uh, laser affects is on the right most corner and on the top and uh, bottom most corners so basically if the given distance is was 2 so if the given uh, distance was 2 then this laser would be covering these cells so if the given distance was 2 then this laser would have been covering this cells and this robot would not be able to pass through either of this cell neither through this pathway so basically you can always see that if you want to move your robot the most optimal path to move your robot is either through this location or through this location so if the take uh, let's say that the distance was somewhat d so in that case if this laser if this laser was somehow covering this cell like any of the cell present in the first row then this robot can definitely not pass through any of these pathways like if like this let me say that this cell contains the uh, laser and this laser also covers any of the cell that is present in the top row so that then the robot can definitely not pass through any of the cell over here like on the top of the la uh, laser because if the robot wants to move to the right it has to cross it uh, somewhere but since the cell number one like since the row number one is itself blocked all the bottom most rows will definitely be blocked so in this case uh, what you can see is that robot can move not move through this direction if the cells if this cell covers this location like if the deadly laser covers this location then the robot can definitely not pass through any of the uh, top cells because uh, it has to somewhere or the other cross this boundary but it cannot cross this similarly if this laser would have covered this cell like any cell on the first column then in that case the, uh, the robot cannot pass through this pathway it has either it has to follow either this pathway or it cannot pass because uh, somewhere or the other it would have to move to the bottom and if it tries to move to the bottom first then it gets intercepted by this laser and it cannot move down so it has to basically try out uh, right movement first and then try out the bottom movement similarly if the laser uh, cuts out this position then also the a uh, robot cannot pass through this cell because somewhere or the other it has to cross this area 
and to cross this area since this laser affects the bottom most cell so it will affect all the cells that are present in the row number uh, that is that starts from the laser itself and that ends at the bottom grid so in that case also the robot would have to follow this pathway or some somewhat different pathway that uh, passes uh, through the top of the laser so this is what the solution is so basically you check whether this if this cell is affected or not and if this cell is affected then the robot uh, would should be able to pass through this pathway that is if this cell is affected uh, then both of these cells should be free and in the other case like if the robot wants to follow this pathway so in that case both of these two cells should be free because if the robot wants to pass through this pathway then it uh, want to avoid the laser at all costs and the maximum that it can avoid is by moving through the uh, rows and columns that are farthest to the uh, laser so the topmost row would definitely is definitely the farthest to the laser uh, talking about the uh, cells that are present on the top of the laser and the rightmost uh, row column is also farthest to the laser so in that case the robot can try out this pathway so this is what the solution is i'll go over my code so so the code is i take the input of n comma m and i take the input of the laser cell and i take the distance t and i first check whether my last cell the cell that i want to reach is affected by laser or not because if that cell itself is affected by the laser then the, the robot cannot uh, move to that location safely so in that case i print minus 1 and i try out this pathway first initially i try out this pathway like uh, which one i am trying i am trying both of the pathways like this uh, this pathway so in this pathway the robot has to cross somewhere from the top of the uh, laser so in that case this distance is let's say the uh, row and column number of the laser was x comma y so in that case this distance is x minus 1 and this distance is m minus 5 where m is the total number of columns so i am trying out whether both of these distances are greater than equal to t or not are greater than t or not because if they are less than or equal to t then this cell like uh, the cell num like this cell in the top rows uh, topmost row would be affected by the laser and this cell in the rightmost uh, column would be affected by the laser if the distance is less than or equal to t so i check uh, whether like i check the row distance x minus 1 and the column distance is m minus y and i check whether if both of them are greater than t or not and if it is greater than t then the robot can pass through that pathway which i showed you uh, like it and uh, traverse uh, to the right first and then to the bottom and the answer would be n plus m minus 2 because you are traversing n minus 1 rows to n minus 1 rows to the bottom and m minus 1 columns to the right and if this doesn't work out then i check for the bottom pathway like initially move to the bottom and then to the right so in that case the bottom distance is n minus x where n is the total number of rows and the column distance is y minus 1 and if both of them are greater than t then my robot can pass and the answer is n plus m minus 2 otherwise my answer is minus 1 because the robot cannot pass through any pathway so that's the solution for problem b and i'll move on to problem c so in this problem you are given an array uh, consisting of n integers which is sorted in non descending order and in one operate uh, like you you have to like create an array d consisting of n arbitrary non negative integers so the point of this question is this non negative integers and you set bi is equal to ai plus di for each of the bi and you sort the final array b in non decreasing order and for each of the array element you have to find the minimum and the maximum value of this corresponding di that you can have so what the problem is just a second so you have been given with an array a so and this array is of n integers this array is of n, uh, length n and what you do is you come up with any arbitrary array of length n and you uh, correspondingly add these two elements and you finally get an array b and you sort that in non decreasing order and you have to find the minimum and the like you have been given with this array a and this array b and you have to find the maximum and the minimum uh, uh, value that this 
corresponding element can take so let's see how can we find the minimum element first because that's easy so we know that each of the bi each of the bi is actually obtained by adding a non negative integer to my array element a so the bi corresponds to so uh, what i mean to say is that uh, this bi corresponds to ai uh, ai plus di plus di where i know that di has to be greater than or equal to 0 because i can only add a non negative integer to my array ai because it's uh, clearly mentioned in the question so i so to find the minimum value uh, that this di can take what i can do is i can find the element present in my array bi that is just greater than or equal to the array element ai because uh, what my di is what my di is my di would be then bi minus ai my di would be bi minus ai and since i want to minimize my di uh, this ai is already fixed so i want my bi such that it is just greater than or equal to this ai because it has to be non negative and it has to be least so i try to make bi as small as possible and the uh, least possible value that it can take is ai so i found i find the lower bound of this ai present in my uh, array bi so let's say that uh, value is x so in that case so x is the lower bound of uh, ai that is present in the array bi so in that case the answer would be just x minus ai and similarly uh, to find the maximum value that ti can take it's a bit tricky so let's say this is my array a and it consists of uh, 2 3 and 5 2 3 and 5 and let's say my array b that i have right now consists of uh, 4 5 and 6 4 5 and 6 so in this case what you can uh, let me say that it consists of 4 4 and 6 so one thing that you can think initially of that the maximum value of di corresponding to this location is just 6 minus uh, 2 because what i just said is that my di is actually equal to uh, bi minus ai so bi minus ai and to minimize my di what i did was take the element that is just greater than or equal to bi so in that case you would have taken this value 2 and you would have said that the minimum value that the di can take is 2 because uh, the lower bound of this 2 in this array b is 4 so the minimum possible di for this corresponding array element is 2 and so similarly you would think of that to maximize this value of di what you can take is the maximum value present in the array bi but that is not the case because uh, what you can think is that you take this as your corresponding bi uh, like you can you can take this element as the bi for your first uh, array element and in that case what you would get is di corresponding uh, like the corresponding value of di that you would get is 4 but this is not possible why is it not possible because this array element 6 that is present in bi is actually reserved for uh, this uh, array element that has a value of 5 because what I just said is that my DIs are always positive. So the basic condition is the DIs are always positive. So there has to be one element in my BI that is actually greater than or equal to 5. Because there would be some DI. Let me say that this was D3 corresponding to this position. So if D3 was added to this array element, then I would have some uh then i would have some number x that is greater than or equal to 5 and that would be present in my array b and there is only one number that is greater than or equal to 5 and is present in array b and that is the number 6 so this 
value 6 that is present in my array B has actually uh, correlation with this array element 5 because this array, this value 6 cannot belong to any other integer because it has to belong to this array element 5 because this is the only number that is greater than or equal to 5 so uh, corresponding to this element uh, I get that this can only be paired with this element 6 so none of these element can get paired with this element 6 so what I do is that basically to find the solution I first eliminate the answers to all the greater elements because in this case what I am trying to do I am trying to find the maximum possible number that my di can take after eliminating all the possible values for the greater element so for example what I mean to say is that if I consider the answer for this ele array element 5 then I know that I have to find one corresponding entry like I have to find one corresponding entry in my array B that is greater than or equal to 5 and I find the least corresponding entry uh, in this array so for example what I mean to say is that let's say my array was somewhat this let's say my array was 4, 6 and 8 so not this 4 so let me say that my array was 4, 6 and 8. So in that case, I could have paired this 2 with this array element 8. Because uh, this 5 in this case can be paired with this array element 6. And this 3 can be paired with this array element 4. So I am free to pair this 2 up with this 8. But in the other case, like in the previous case that I showed you, 2, 4 and 6 this 6 was not actually available to be paired up with 2 because this 6 had to correspond to this 5 and this 4 had to correspond to this uh, 3 there was no other choice uh, because the di's are always positive but in this case the 5 can actually be paired up with 6 and 3 can actually be paired up with 4 so this 8 can be left free and can be paired with this array element 4 so uh, in this case uh, if I have been given this array 4, 6 and 8 so the maximum di that I would get for this position is actually 6 because I can pair this 2 up with this 8 so the maximum value that I can have is 8 minus 2 that is 6 so what I do is I eliminate all the possible answers for the bigger elements first and then I move down to the lower elements so what I mean by that is that I consider my answer for array element 5 so for array element 5, I can pair this up with this array element 8. Like this is a valid combination. I'm not saying that this is the only combination because 5 can also be paired up with 6. And 5 can also be paired up with 8. So the maximum value that I can get is by pairing this 5 up with this 8. So the maximum value of ti corresponding to this array element 5 is actually 8 minus 5. That is 3. Okay. So the maximum value corresponding to this 5 is 3. And moving down to array element 3 what i do is i remove one element from array b that is just greater than or equal to this array element 5 because this 5 needs to be paired up with someone and i'm saying is that what i'm saying is that i can find a corresponding entry is in b that is just greater than or equal to this array element 5 because i want to use up the minimum possible number as possible because if I try to pair this up with this 8, this 5 with this 8, then this 8 is actually not available to get paired up with this 2 in further operations. So what I try to do is I try to pair this up with this 5, like since all of the di's are independent, so all of the di's are independent. So the, my answer for 5 is independent of my answer for 8. Uh, my answer for 5 is actually independent of my answer for 2. Uh, what I'm saying is that if I pair uh, pair this 5 with this 8 the maximum value of di is 3 but when I try to pair this 2 with this 8 it is not affected by whether I have considered pairing this 5 with this 8 in the maximum possible answer of for 5 or not these di's are actually independent of each other so to get the maximum answer of 2 what I do is I pair this 5 with the least possible number that it can be paired up with so this 5 would be paired by 6 and in the next operation the maximum number that is available in the array is this 8 so the maximum answer for this array element 3 would be 8 
and I try to pair this 3 with the next greater than uh, with the next greater number that is present in the array itself so that corresponds to 4 so that's after 2 operations this 3 gets paired up with this 4 and when I reach this array element 2 it gets paired up with this 8 so the maximum possible uh, di value for each of the element is 8 minus 2 that is 6 3 uh, 8 minus 3 that is 5 and 8 minus 5 that is 3 so for example let me say that this value was also 2 so let me say so so the solution is basically over but i'll give you a, a nice example so this is 2 3 and 5 this is my array a and this is my array b that consists of 2 uh, 6 and 8 so in this case for the array element 5 the maximum possible value of di is 3 because i can pair this 5 up with this 8 so what i'll do is i'll write the maximum value for it and i remove the number that is just greater than or equal to this 5 so in this case i remove the 6 now my array a consists of 2 3 2 and 3 and my array p consists of 2 and 8 so in the next operation i have to find the maximum possibility i that corresponds to this array element 3 and the maximum number that i can pair this up with is 8 and so i pair this up with this 8 and the maximum possibility i that i get is 5 but now in this operation like after uh, performing this operation i have to pair this 3 up with some number that is greater than or equal to 3 so in that in this case the only number that is greater than or equal to 3 is actually 8 so I have no other choice than to pair this 3 up with this 8. So when I pair this 3 up with this 8, the only element that I can pair this up with this 2 is actually 2 itself. So in this case, the maximum possible di value that I can get for this 2 is 0. Because I have to pair this 2 numbers with the 2 great two numbers that are greater than or equal to the initial numbers present in the array. Because the di's are actually non-negative. So initially what I said is that, I had to pair this 5 up with any number that is greater than or equal to 5 so I paired up with this 6 and since these two elements are not available anymore so the next number that I can pair this 3 up with is uh, this 8 itself so in the next operation I'll pair this 3 with this 8 and the only possible array element that this 2 can be paired up with this 2 itself so the maximum di corresponding to this is 0 and the minimum di corresponding to this is also 0 so this is the solution so i'll show you my implementation uh, so basically what to do so this is the pre-processing that i did i actually didn't notice that in the question my array was already uh, sorted in non-decreasing order so the idea is to iterate through the maximum possible value in array a so that you remove the answers for the maximum possible value so what i did was i tried to sort the array which was already already sorted so this is this step is actually not required because this array is is already given in non descending order so in this case what i do is that i insert uh, all the my array element p in a multi set and for each i start iterating uh, for each of the array element a and to find the minimum possible di what i told is that i find the lower bound of this array element ai in my multi set and the minimum possible value that this di can take is the lower bound minus the element itself so the minimum possible answer for each of the uh, position is actually the lower bound of that position minus the array element present in that position itself and i print my answers for the minimum possible value di and then i do s dot clear i reinitialize my multi set with all the possible values of bi and I declare this maximum uh, array that would contain that would contain my answer for the maximum value of di. So I start iterating from the maximum number that is present in the last uh, position. So this is not required. This val is uh, so what I did was I declared a vector of ve uh, vector of pair. So I was trying to sort this array. I sorted it by the array element itself and the position of this array element itself. So even if you don't sort it what it will just be the uh, the maximum possible value with the maximum value that is present in the array a itself 
is already at the last most position so what i do is that i start iterating from the last most position of the array element a and corresponding to that uh, the answer is like the corresponding to that like if i am at some array element a then corresponding to that the answer is the maximum value present in my array element b right now minus the array element itself so the maximum possible di value uh, that corresponds to this position is actually the maximum possible value that is present in the multi set right now minus this value itself so this is the maximum possible answer for this and after assigning this answer to this index what i do is i remove the lower bound of this value from the multi set so what i explained right now is that after performing the array of like the operation for array element 5 i remove the lower bound of 5 that is actually 6 so in the next operation i remove the 6 from the array b and after the next operation i remove the lower bound of array like array element 3 that would be 8 so after each of the assignment operation i remove the lower bound of the corresponding array element and uh, i iterate uh, through the uh, remaining elements that are present in the array and, and finally i print my answer so that is the solution for problem c and let's move on to problem b so just a second so in problem b you are given two arrays a and b consisting of n integers and let's define a function f a b such that uh, you can like you construct an array c of same size n where each of the array element is the corresponding czar between the two uh, elements that are posit that are present in the same location so uh, what i mean to say is that the array element ci corresponds to this uh, array element uh, ai zord with array element bi so and you have to find the maximum value of uh, this function and the value of the function is the and like the bitwise and of the entire array c is the value of the function and you have to maximize this uh, expression you have to maximize the and of the whole array and where each of the array element is just the czar of two corresponding entries in my array a and array b and you have to maximize this uh, the value of this function that is the and of the entire array and to maximize what you can do is like you can reorder the array b in any way that you want and uh, you have the choice to leave the initial order like to keep the final order as the initial order itself so and you have to find the maximum value of this function f so let's see what the problem is so you have been given with this array a and you have been given with this array b and you can uh, permute this array b in any possible way that you want and at the end what you do is like you construct an array c that consists of uh, this, this. so at the end you construct this array c such that ci is actually uh, CII corresponds to the czar of AI and BI. So the CI corresponds to the czar of AI and BI and the final answer like the function value for this array is just the and bit by sign of all the elements that are present in this array itself and you have to maximize the value of this function. So what we tried to do is that you can see that the array elements are up to 2 to the power 30. So the maximum czar like the maximum value of this bitwise and that you can achieve cannot exceed the maximum value that is present in the array itself so what i mean to say is that the bitwise and of all the array elements cannot ex exceed the maximum ci value that is present in the array itself and the maximum ci value that is present in the array the maximum bit of that cannot exceed cannot exceed like what i mean to say is that ai a is or with b where a is some array number like array element a and b is some array element b so the maximum possible bit that is present in a's or b cannot exceed the maximum possible bit that is present in a and that is present in b so the final answer like the maximum value of the function would have to be less than or equal to 2 to the power 30 so this is the maximum possible bit uh, that is uh, that can be uh, present in the answer so the maximum possible bit that can be present in the final answer itself is also less than or equal to 2 to the power 30. so what i try to do is like i try to 
max like to maximize the value of the function itself what i try to do is like i try to iterate bit by bit starting from the highest bit itself so i start from the 30th bit itself and what i try to do is like i try to make this bit on and if i am able to make this bit on then i initialize like then i say that this bit is actually present in the answer otherwise what i do is like i start iterating for the other bit like i try for the bit number 29th i try for the bit number 28th and so on so i try bit by bit for each of the array element uh, like uh, i try bit by bit for each of the bits starting from the 30th bit and going down to the 0th bit and i try to uh, what i try to do is like i try to uh, incorporate this bit in my final answer and if i am able to do this i say that my final answer contains this bit otherwise i uh, just move down to a lower bit so basically to check whether your final answer can contain this bit or not so the basically the question boils down to uh, checking whether your final answer can contain this bit or not so to check this what i do is that i initialize my answer as zero so this is the maximum possible answer that i can have right now and suppose that i'm checking for bit number 38 so suppose that i'm checking for bit number 38 so in this case what i want is and this is the first bit that i'm checking so what I want is I want some of the numbers in A. So this is my array element A. I want some of the numbers in A that contains this bit. And correspondingly, what I have to do is I have to pair this elements up with the remaining elements in array B that do not contain this bit. So for example, what I'm saying is that uh, let's say my array element ai is actually some number uh, 10010 so this is the binary representation of my array element ai this is some array element i not talking about the position and this is my array element uh, bi like bj so this uh, this index can be different so what i try to say is that let's say this is my array element bj what I want to check is that can this bit like can this bit be present in the answer? So for this bit we have to be present in the answer. The corresponding values uh, that this array element gets paired up with, like the corresponding PJ that this AI get gets paired up with, has to have this bit off in the in the corresponding position. So like what i mean to say is that if this bit has to be present in the answer then it has to be uh, on in one of the number and it has to be off in other number it cannot be on in both of the numbers simultaneously because the zor of uh, those two numbers would make the bit off and if the both of the bits are already off then the uh, zor is all already off so this if i want to consider bit i in my answer then what I want to achieve is that this bit i should actually be present in one of the numbers and it should not be present in the other number. So this is what I try to check. So I try to check whether uh, I try to check for all the array elements a. So for all the array elements a, I find there are x numbers that have the ith bit on. So like there are total of n elements in my array a and x of those contain the ith bit as on uh, the ith bit of those x numbers are on and correspondingly i check in array element b uh, how many elements are there such that the ith bit is off let's say the number of elements that have the ith bit or off is y so what i want to achieve is that this x should actually be equal to this y because if I want to achieve uh, an answer that has the ith bit on, then this x has to be equal to this y because for each of the array element that has the bit on, I need to find a corresponding array element that has the bit off. So once I uh, incorporate this bit into my answer, so in that case, suppose for the 30th bit, I find that there are uh, three numbers in array element in array a that contain this bit off 
and there are three numbers in array b that do not contain this bit on, uh, on. so in that case i can pair this three with this three and the remaining with the remaining so in that in that case for each of the possible combination that my 30th bit would be on in my answer so once i uh, check my answer for the 30th bit then my then i increment my answer so initially i initialize my answer as zero and after checking for the 30th bit i initialize my answer as zero uh, plus two to the power 30 because this bit is on in my final answer that is sure and to check for the next to check for the next uh, bit like to check for the bit number 29th what i now what i want to do is that i cannot independently check for this bit number 29th whether this bit is actually on in some number x and this number this bit is has off in some number y because this bit number 29 is now not independent because what i am saying is that i have already considered this bit number 30 and i have said that this 30th bit is on in my final answer so i have to consider both of the bits now simultaneously so what i mean is that let's say let's again say that my array element a is like some ai is actually this one zero zero one zero and this is zero one zero zero one 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 and this is also uh one so let me say that we go to zero so let me say this is one 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 and one okay so what i say is that this is my ai this is my pj and this is my pk so i have already said like these are two elements which i can try to pair this ai with so i'm not saying that there are two elements remaining in my array b and one element in my remaining in my array b and my array a i'm just saying that let's say these are two entries that are present in my array b so what i have said just now is that let me say that i have said that this bit can be included in my answer let me say that i have already said that this bit can be included in my answer i have checked uh, like this is let me say that this is the 30th bit and i have checked for this bit and i say that this bit can be included in, in the answer so when i try to incorporate the answer for the 29th bit i have to make sure that my 30th bit remains on so what i mean to say is that uh, once I try to incorporate this 29th bit, so for this array element AI, uh, for this array element AI, what I can see is that if I pair this array element AI with this array element PK, then in that case, uh, this 0, this 0 gets paired up with this 1 and this bit would remain on. But in that case, I'm losing out on this bit. Like this bit is gets similar to this bit. So in that case, I'm losing out on this bit uh, and the opportunity cost is uh, worse than before because what I want to do is I want to maximize the answer so the first condition is I try to make all the bits that are already on as on and after that I try to maximize the bit that I can have right now so in this case what I can see is that uh, this considering uh, like pairing this AI with this BJ is actually optimal because in this case I am getting this bit uh, in my final answer no matter whether this bit remains on or off so I try to iterate bit by bit and what I do is that uh, I so let me go over my solution then then it would be easy I guess so basically I take my input I take my input AI and bi and i initialize my answer as zero and i start iterating from the maximum possible bit uh, that i can have and for each of the bit i check whether this uh, bit i can take or not and if this bit i can take then i uh, change my answer to that uh, like then i incorporate that bit into my final answer and finally i print my answer and how do i check this bit is what i am discussing right now so initially uh, I have this answer and I try to incorporate 
I get fit into my answer. So this CK is the temporary variable that I'm creating. So in this temporary variable, I'm putting my I get fit as on and I see, I try to check whether this thing works or not. So if this thing works, then I update my answer with this uh, answer, like with this value of CK. Otherwise I leave it unchanged and I uh, move to a lower bit. And how do I check this? So I create a map. So in this map, what I do is I iterate through all the array elements uh, that are present in my array A and B. And uh, what I do is I try, I do, I increment the answer for this expression and I decrement the answer for this expression. And finally, I check whether uh, each of the array element present in my map is zero or not. If that is zero, then I return one, otherwise I return zero. And I'll explain what these two expressions are. So basically, what I'm trying to say is that, suppose uh, this is my array A. So suppose this is my array A and this is my array B. And I'm saying that this uh, is the answer that I'm trying to consider. Let me say that my answer, like the uh, current answer that I'm trying to make because uh, what I'm trying to pass in my expression is the current answer that I can take. This is the previous answer that I have already already considered and I'm trying to make this bit on. So if I try to make this bit on uh, this uh, value that the new value of answer that I can get after making this bit on, I'm trying to check whether that value works or not. So I try to check whether this answer works or not. To check whether this answer works or not, what I try to do is that suppose I have this array element AI and I and like I make a bitwise and between these two elements. So in that case, uh, what I would get is some uh, thing that is actually a sub mask of this, uh, this answer. Because what I'm trying to say is that uh, let's say my answer is x and let's say this array element ai like let, what i'm trying to say is that let's say i call my answer x like this answer this x is nothing but just the answer that i'm considering right now so i can write this answer as it just as answer itself so what i say is that answer and ai answer and ai is actually a sub mass of my answer itself like the bits that are present in this expression cannot uh, like have to be a sub mask of the bits that are present in this operation in this expression because none of the bit in this expression uh, can be such that it is not present in my answer itself because this is a bitwise and operation and if some bit is present in this operation that it has to be present in ai as well as my answer itself so what I'm saying is that this expression is always the sub mask of this expression. So let's say what I get is uh, after uh, taking a bitwise and of my answer with this array element AI, I get a corresponding value of 1, 0, uh, 1, uh, 0, 0 and 0. So now what I have to do is that uh, so what I say is that my answer was my answer corresponded to AI Zord with BI. My answer corresponded to AI Zord with BI. Okay. And I want my answer such that this bit is actually present in my B itself. So what I'm trying to say is that if my uh, answer contains ith bit on then it has to be either present in AI or BI. Okay. So what I did was I, uh, I take, I took a bitwise and of this answer with this AI. So what it will give me would, uh, what it will give me would, it would give me all the bits that are common in my answer and my AI itself. And I finally saw it with AI. Like I finally saw it with the answer. So let me say my answer was like, this is my answer that I'm trying to make. And this is my AI, like this is my AI. So in that case, ending these two operations would give me one zero zero zero. Okay. 
so but i wanted my answer to be this and my answer contains this so i try to check which all bits am i missing on and to check which all bits am i am i missing on i take a bitwise or of these two entries and if i take the bitwise or of these two entries it will give me 0 uh, 1 0 0 and this is the bits that i am missing out and these bits have to be present in my array uh, array, array element bi because what i mean to say is that i told you that if ci is equal to ai zord with bi if my ci is equal to ai zord bi then each of the bit that is on in ci has to be present in only one of the uh, array element it has to be on in either ai or bi because that is how the zor operation works if the uh, corresponding bit is on in the final zor value like if uh, ith bit is on in x zor with y then ith bit can only be present in one of the array elements itself so what i try to do is that initially i try to uh, check what all bits are present in my array a element array element ai and i take a bitwise and of that and i check what all bits am i missing out on right now so this is what the answer this is the answer that i'm trying to make and this is my array element ai this is my array element ai so i take a bitwise and of this and the bitwise and would tell me what all bits does ai and answer have in common so what all bits do AI have and answer have in common? So those bits can be incorporated in the answer itself and the remaining bits that are not present in my array element AI, I try to take that bits from the, my array element BI. So this is what I'm trying to do. Uh, what I'm trying to do is that this value is the value that I'm, this value is the answer that I'm trying to make. So this value is the thing that I passed over here. My answer is odd with the uh, next possible answer that I can have. And what I do is that I take the bitwise and between my val my between the answer that I'm trying to make and my corresponding array element AI. So this would give me the common bits that are there in the answer and the AI itself. And I saw it with my answer that I'm trying to make. So this would give me the common bits that are present in my array element AI and my answer. And if I saw it with the answer itself, it would give me the bits that are not present in the answer and that are common like this would give me the bits that are not actually present in my answer so uh, considering this example what i said is that this uh, suppose my suppose 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 just a second so suppose my answer was uh, 1000 and my array element ai was also this so in that case ai this is my answer that i'm trying to make and this is my array element ai so in this case ai and with answer would give me one one zero zero and if i saw this with the initial answer that i started with one one zero zero i'll get zero so this zero means that i there are no bits that i require from my array element b right now because what i mean to say is that in this case uh in this in the above case in the above case my array element my answer was actually 1100 and my array element ai was 1000 and the end of it gave me 1000 and zoring it with my answer told me that this bit is missing from the and operation and this bit i require from my array element bi right now and if the answer uh if the initial answer and my and operation gives the result zero then it says that i do not require any bit from my array element b so this is what i try to do i try to uh, incorporate all the bits that are present in my answer and my array element ai and i saw it with bi so and i increment my counter the incrementing my counter means that i'm saying that i want an array element bi such that bi and with ai gives me those bits that are remaining from that are missing from ai's and with bi what i'm trying to do is that i want to pair ai with such bi such that the bits that are missing from ai and bi ai and my answer are actually present in my bi and answer so this is what i am requiring 
so this is what i am requiring right now i am requiring the bits that are not present in my ai and answer and this is the bits that i can achieve from my array element pi so what i'm trying to say is that for each of the requirement i'm incrementing my counter by one and for each of the requirement that can be satisfied by my array element pi i am decrementing my counter by one and for each like after doing this for all the elements that are present in my map itself i check whether the counter for each of the element is zero or not and if it is zero then i return one otherwise if any of the array element is not zero then i return uh, zero and if you ask me why every array element has to be zero i'll give you one example and i think that would make it clear so let me say that i had uh, four numbers in my array a let me say and i'll write the binary representation of them so 1001 and 0 0 1 1 0 0 1 and 0 1 0 1 and correspondingly my array b has uh, a 0 1 0 1 0 0 1 1 and a 1 1 1 1 and a 1 1 1 0 so if i want to make this fourth bit on if i want to make this fourth bit on i'll pair this ai with some bi that doesn't contain this fourth bit okay so i pair this ai with some bi that doesn't contain this fourth bit and similarly uh, for this also if i want to make this fourth bit on i have to pair this uh, ai sorry i'm sorry uh, i have to pair this ai with some bi that doesn't contain this fourth bit on and similarly for this also i have to pair this ai with bi that doesn't contain the fourth bit on and similarly uh, since fourth bit is missing from uh, this array element ai i try to uh, pair this up with some array element bi that contains this fourth bit on and similarly for this so what i see is that each of the for each of like i had two numbers present in my array a that had this fourth bit on and correspondingly i want exactly two numbers in my array b that doesn't contain this bit on because i want to have a one on one mapping because for the remaining two numbers i want to pair them up with the numbers in b that have the bit on like for each of the number that are that is present in my array a and contains this bit as on i want exactly those number of array, array, array elements in my array b that contains this bit off so at the end this is the requirement that I have in my array B in my array A and this is the requirement that can be satisfied by array B and at the end each of the requirements should actually cancel each other out and finally uh, what I check is that for each of the element whether the counter of each of the element is zero or not because counter is incremented by this uh, values AI this values AI increment this is the value that I require in my array B and this counter b i rep, uh, represents these are the value that i am providing by array b so each of the values have to balance out each other and at the end i want all the uh, elements present in my map to be zero and if it is satisfied then i return one and if it is not satisfied then i return a zero and if it is satisfied i increment my answer like i initialize update my answer with answer is equal to answer or with uh, one uh, shifted to the right most position by i like i update my answer by uh, answer plus 2 to the power i and finally i print my answer so that's the solution for problem t and if you have any doubts you can ask me in the comment section itself so thank you